My name's Adam Manaka and I'm the financial controller for High Tech Oils. With our national capacity, we can now service Australian companies nationwide. Of late, we have now expanded into the New Zealand market. Here at High Tech Oils, we receive premium base oils and premium additive packs. Together, with our highly trained staff, we manufacture over 500 premium quality products. High Tech Oils is Australian made and Australian owned. On today's show, we head to Winton Motor Raceway in Victoria for the penultimate round of the High Tech Drift All-Star Series, as the championship battle between Bo Yates and Michael Prosnick is starting to intensify at the pointy end of the season. Then we head up the Hume Highway to Wakefield Park in Goulburn, New South Wales for the fourth and final round of the Australian Super Truck Championship. This is Speed Week. Welcome to Winton Motor Raceway for round four of the High Tech Drift All-Stars. We're back down here in Victoria, bringing the whole road show out here to have the Pro and the Pro-Ams battling it out on the front S's of Winton. Fantastic layout, grippy surface, and even in practice we saw some excitement. How are they going out there yesterday, Scott? Oh, mate, the boys are really pushing hard. The judges are really pushing these drivers to hit these clips. They've changed up the layout a bit this weekend. Yesterday, we saw the boys getting nice and tight. The main part of the track is this crucial point out here wide. If the, the boys don't get wide there, they're going to be marked down quickly by the judges. So I'm just keen to see battles today. The weather is beautiful. Uh, tie frying goodness is on the way. We really have been blessed. Plenty of sunshine for track temp, nice and cool for the turbo cars. And that front section onto the straight with the outside zone, even with cars going solo, we have seen some almost carnage, a little bit of carnage, but also some very snappy switchbacks. So when these cars are blazing side by side, it's going to be a sight to see. I've got Dan Mackey standing next to me, who's one of the head judges here for High Tech Drifting Australia. Now, Dan, tell me a bit about what you're expecting out of the guys today. You've got, you know, top 24 Pro-Am and top 24 Pro, so. Yeah, look, we've, um, you know, we just keep building stronger and stronger fields. Um, today, we've got an amazing field of drivers in the Pro, so it's going to be absolutely killer battles in there. Uh, we're just running one qualifying, so uh, there's been some shake-ups in there. I know the boys up the top are going to go through that with everyone back home in a minute. Um, but it's been awesome. The track's fast, the track's dry. Uh, it's really grippy, lots of speed. So today we we're, uh, we're asking for a pretty fast line for them. Um, certainly through the first bit, we want to make sure they're hitting those clips. Just running a wheel up onto each of the each of the curbs, making sure they're getting right on those clipping zones. Um, there's a little bit of trickery bits to them. They are a little bit later on the corners than usual. So it's been causing some issues early. A couple, a couple of the big guys kind of couldn't quite get it there, which is unusual. Um, and then once you get into the second section, it's about getting some big angle, not too much speed, but really dialing the angle onto the outer zone, filling that right out of the clipping at the uh, ripple strip on the first one, then getting big angle as they come through the last clip and across the line. And next to you, we've got Brendan Dunker from uh, head judge of D1. Um, how are you finding it being down here for the high tech drifting Australia? Yeah, hey, it's um, it's really cool to uh, to get back here at Winton. So uh, it's been probably about three years since I was here last, and um, yeah, it's a cool track, like really flowy, um, looks good. Um, you know, for like for the cameras, the the cars are, from last time, you know, it's it's really really grippy here. So the cars are probably a lot faster. The level of the cars is higher. Um, some of the guys, you know, the power versus traction, it's it's um, it's making it a little bit tricky for them. But yeah, I think we're going to see some some definitely some good battles. Um, hopefully not some simple mistakes. I mean, that can be the divider. But um, yeah, that's the weather's put it on for us as well, which really helps. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Brenda, for coming across. And back to you guys. Coming into the final two rounds, this is how the points are standing for Pro Class. And the story to watch will be Bo Yates and Michael Prosnick, both of these guys hungry in the pits, looking to open a lead over the other. But Brad Tui's there in that third position, hungry on the heels of these guys. Rob Arbolino, who's unfortunately not here this round, and Aaron Juar rounding out the top five. Tensions are high in the pits. Let's head down with Carly to hear from some of the drivers. How are you feeling about today? 
Yeah, good. Weather's good. Um, we had a bit of practice this morning, um, just adapting from World Time Attack. We're running a wet setup. So back on a dry setup, uh, finding it quite grippy. We're just trying to pull some grip out of it uh, and get some more wheel speed. So we're getting there. I think our lines are pretty good. Um, now we just got to keep it up. So next step is um, going up the championship against Bo Yates. How are you feeling about that? Because you're really good friends with Bo. So. Yeah. Now we've been battling uh, like this for years. Uh, top driver. Uh, very similar drivers, but different styles, I guess, if that makes sense. So, win or lose, I'm happy, um, you know, and, and as long as it's a fair battle, it's all good. So, Bo, you're running up in the championship against uh, Proz, and, you know, this thing's been going on for, what, 10 years now, you know, back and forwards. How are you feeling about today? Yeah, look, anytime you come up against Michael on the track, um, he's here again. But we're, we've been so tight throughout the year, it's kind of like we're fighting against each other. It must be only a couple of points in the championship, but... Look, we just had a couple of runs in practice and like it's anyone's game. We're both running Achilles tyres this weekend and I think they're pretty super fast out there. And you know, this Hypertune built um, Toyota Genuine Parts 86, it's, it's a fantastic little car and just really fortunate to be here and be a part of the high tech series and everything we're doing and just here to have a good time really. And last time we were here it was quite treacherous, like you know, I, I call that death alley up on the main straight there. Um, there was so much rubber down that the track was really slick in the rain, but they've, uh, credit to Winton Raceway, they've done, like they've scrubbed the rubber off the track this weekend and there's a lot of grip out there, so look, it's just nice that the sun's shining and uh, everyone's on a level playing field and look, we can put on a, a show for the, the live stream and everyone involved and watching. So I've got Ben Mir next to me and the last round you actually came second, Ben, didn't you? It's first time on the podium. First time, it was a new experience getting champagne um, up my nose and in my hair, but um, no, I really enjoyed it. Um, QR was a while ago now, now we're back here at Winton and um, keen to send it. So Magic Mo, you put on some crazy show on last time you were here at Winton. Uh, tell me a bit about your car because you're nearly on the podium. You came fourth and then we heard a bit of knocking or what happened? Yeah, well I had to forfeit so I couldn't battle for third um, due to spun bottom end bearing. So it was an old tired motor but it's all rebuilt now. I haven't had much sleep but I'll tell you what, I'm hungry for it and I'm, I'm coming here to put the battle up to Bow Yates again and I'm definitely not backing down this time. Yeah, I'm confident that the engine's good and it's going to last. I wasn't planning on competing this year, but when you get a call from a company like High Tech Oils to drive a beast like this, you can't say no. It was just a ride and drive deal. Tell me a bit about your car. Rightio, so it's an uh, old 79 Falcon. We've sort of tried to modernise it a little bit with a wise fab front end, independent rear end. Um, and at the moment we're just learning the car but we're really enjoying the challenges of new tracks and obviously the competition around us is helping us level up a little bit as well. So, Look I love the track, um, as contrasting to say Hidden Valley where we come from the corners are very flowing so one transition leads into the next and um, that that's good and sort of challenging as well so yeah um, but I just love the whole circuit here, it's amazing. The friendly pit atmosphere is a great contrast to the serious action we see out on track. And third place qualifier here, Brad Tui, has got to be stoked with that result. He's currently sitting in third in the series standing, so that's going to put him in good stead for the battles through round four. Now, just ahead of him is Bo Yates, someone we've become accustomed to seeing on top of the qualifying order. He was driving very cleanly, but there is a man who knocked him off that top spot. Now, luckily, I have head judge Dan Mackey here with me in the qualifying booth. Can you talk me through Michael Prosnick's top qualifying run and how he ended up in the top spot. Absolutely. Pros there throwing it in hard and really dialing that angle on. Very, very stable in through that first clip. Again, switches back, gets maximum angle, heaps of cook and lots of throttle early. Pushes this car out right out to the zone that we were asking for out towards the clip there. Flicks it back again, dials the angle on. Big run from Pros. Those qualifying results show the quality of this field with less than 10 points dividing them. Moel Hooley, Alex Sharker, Aaron Juar and Angus Kidd down the bottom there. Warwick Hill, Brad Tui and Bo Yates. But of course, Michael Prosnick on top. Tell me a bit about the run. Um, the first run was pretty uh, rubbish and uh, I had my spot on my brother Rob over the, uh, <laughs> over the comms. Tell me to pull me head in, go a bit harder, wind the angle off and uh, and hit out the, go out wide to that ripple strip and uh, obviously work. So I think I should listen to him a little bit more. <laughs> to be honest, I'm struggling a bit uh, learning the car. Uh, we just did a qualifier run, which I think one was all right and I tried to turn it up in the second one, but co the, the car still sort of throwing me curveballs and I'm, I feel like I'm kind of reacting rather than dominating the car. But um, I think in this next little session before the battles, I'll uh, get that out of my head and just give it, a, give it a good go, try to get up on some doors. 
With qualifying results in hand, we are now able to set our battle tree and with a single top 24 battle here between our two lowest qualifiers. Now, both Finney and Bonnie have these immaculately presented S15s with a whole lot of power under the bonnet, both very quick cars and committed drivers to boot. But in qualifying, just didn't quite go their way. So unfortunately, one of these guys is going to have to go home after this top 24 battle. Great run from the uh, from Finney up the front there, Dave. We saw Michael just dropping a wheel, and that's possibly going to be the difference here that we see in this battle. Finney getting right up on his door and chasing him hard. Bonnie, unfortunately, missed a lot of Friday practice, uh, but Finney was there and drove it hard. Yeah, definitely deserves a spot in the top 16. Finney has been going so strong throughout the season, but unfortunate position for him going up against Michael Prosnick as our top qualifier. Another unfortunate battle is the two El Huli brothers facing off in the top 16. Seems to happen a lot at the High Tech Drift All-Stars for the O'Hooley brothers to face off together. And they're going to go straight out to battle here. Mo just clipping a uh, cone there as he goes through the chicane. He'll get a minor deduction for that. And they accelerate down and into the zone. Here we go, boys. Let's get it up. Let's put the battle on for the Victorians. It shows how consistent these two guys are with uh, Mo and Kudo qualifying 8th and ninth position. So that's how they've ended up together. These two Turbo LS Titans. And man, Mo out in front cooking. Yeah, Mo really pushing down hard there to throw down a big one. I think Kuda got a little bit lost in his smoke, but a little bit messy from Mo as well. As we switch it around now, watching Mo chasing down Kuda, his brother. See how they go. Flicking in there, Mo is all over him. Chasing hard, he said he was coming to win this, and he's not even going to let his brother stand in the way. This is where the local skill really shows. I think I've just cursed Mo a little bit, but both of these drivers have superior speed up the straight, putting down every single kilowatt that those Turbo LSs pump out. Straight into our next top 16 battle where Ben Mir is chasing Warwick Hill in that Formant E46 BMW. Very interesting car with a lot of speed on it. You can see already Warwick just outpacing Benny Mir a bit, who seems a step behind in the transitions there, Dan. Yeah, the 311 Motorsport machine just a little bit late into the entry and just not quite as stable in his transitions, giving Warwick a slight advantage. We're probably going to get a better view of that here as we ride on board with Warwick Hill. You can see he's right on the door of Benny Mears, straight from the start line, both initiating nicely together, and it's going to be crucial as they come through the middle of the course here. Warwick sucking right up on Benny Mears there. You can see a little bit wide off that clip, but managing to get it all back under control. Heaps closer than Ben was to Warwick. Uh, he's looking good to take the win, Mears, mate, and he will. Next battle now, we've got John Dreyer, a Vic Drift local, chasing down Angus Kidd, a guy who's been on fire all season in that game on Supra. Big power, I think, somewhere north of the 500 kilowatt mark. Up against a little SR20 powered Bluebird that's, you know, in the mid 200s, still pretty staunch, but, uh, you know, double the power there in a much larger car of Angus Kid Supra. Yeah, John winning the wild card to come and compete this weekend. Won it in the Pro Am, decided no, that's not good enough. Want to step up. His sponsors got behind him, threw him some semi slick tyres. Good battle from him, a little bit off Angus. Angus is driving really well this weekend. Slight advantage for him after that first run. Yeah, Gen Care coming to the rescue there for John Dreyer. But it seems like the extreme speed and power of Angus Kidd is a bit hard to overcome. Dreyer, you know, picking up a gap there as he came onto the straight, but then the big dog soups just reeling him back in across the line to give Angus Kidd the nod for progression. Next battle now, we've got James Abbott in the high tech oils 350Z. He is chasing down Aaron Duar, the cloud factory. Dab's driving really well this weekend. You can see already starting to pull a gap on. Uh, James, and I was nearly going to say Rob, I'm so used to seeing him in that thing, but pulling a uh, gap on, on Jabs there and getting a, a nice advantage going into that first run. See, it's funny to see the high tech 350Z being gapped by a faster car on this big flowy track of Winton, but Aaron is just dialed in that Juar racing engines S14. Oh, he's close oh. there. Oh, what's happened? Oh, no. Looks like he might have got a bit too eager there to chase down the big dog and his mate James Abbott, tucking in nicely against the rear quarter, but they're not leaving enough room for that 350Z to transition back. Let's check the replay. Definitely uh, definitely goes down to probably his spotter not telling him how much slower Jabs was. And that car, like you said, Dave, has been so quick all year, that 350Z. Aaron just got too close. It looks like he's clipped the rear wheel with his front wheel, and the torque of that 350Z has just broken something under that car. That's a really, really hard one for anyone who's been in a tight chase. You know that as much as it's tempting to tuck in, you need to watch where their transition point's going to be because that's exactly what can happen. Riding on board now with our top qualifier, Michael Prosnick, who's leading Finney O'Hare in that Fluoro wheel shop S15. 
I was really looking forward to seeing, seeing this battle. Uh, it's one of those battles where Finney's been driving really well all weekend and he should be able to, and has pretty much stuck with uh, Proz there, except for that small mistake in roundabout turn two. I'm sure Finney knows that maybe with a bit of a better qualifying result, he might not have had such a hard battle straight off the bat, but he is thriving under that pressure. Huge entry there from Finney O'Hare. Oh, Proz going really Whoa. wide and he's off. Well, that's something you didn't expect to see. Proz has gone off the track, but coming back to it, it was two wheels off for Finney in the first one, then two wheels off for Proz in the second one. This is going to be a 10-0, 0-10, and we're going to go one more time. This is why it's such a treat having the head judge here in the booth with me. We get inside the head of where these decisions come from. So as much as Proz there did go off the surface pretty heavily in the middle of the track, potentially getting lost in the smoke of Finney O'Hare, who was chuffing and using quite a lot of angle there as well. You know, Proz just lost a bit of track position, but you're right, when Finney was chasing, there were also two wheels in the dirt. So it has to be fair, and regardless of if the mistakes look larger, it is all about the point structure and how the judging structure works. That's right, and for two wheels off, it is classed as a zero, so we're going again. Oh, Finney hitting him there. Big tap. There's bits of Proz's car flying off all over the track there, but he is staying into it and knows that this lead run is crucial to really put Finney's chances at the top eight to bed, but the angry Irishman is not going to take that lying down. Let's watch him lead. The good ride tie replay here first, though, Dave, and we're watching the uh, big hit from... Oh, there it is. You see Finney right into the edge, and I actually think Finney's bent something in the steering there because if you watch for the remainder of this run, he's just not comfortable. The car doesn't seem to be doing what he's doing. Not characteristic of what we've seen Finney doing all for the rest of the weekend, and he even picks up this clipping cone right through there. Yeah, on transition there, I think I spied a cheeky bit of toe in. So maybe if he's bumped the lead... Yeah, there's the leading bit of the wheel onto the rear wheel of Michael Prosnick's car, potentially just giving that tyre rod or even kinking a little bit of a lower control arm. Going to make it a big challenge. So this is the second battle of the one more time. Finney's going to lead it out. Throws it in hard. Pros is up behind him, but he's pretty sure he's going to have a, an advantage. His spotter would have been all over him. Big, big angle there from Finney through all these corners. A slight bobble early on in the run about the only thing I can fault with him. But, you know, you're going to have to bring your A game to a party with Michael Prosnick, who's just gotten the nod there from the judges and found his way into the top eight. Another man looking to put some points on the board is Brad Tui with Danny Probert all the way down here from the Northern Territory giving Winton Raceway a crack and chasing down some of the quickest drift cars in the country. Looks like he's just gotten a little bit lost in the smoke back there though, Dan. Finding a little bit of a trick um, seeing behind that smoke machine of Brad Tui's, but you know, that's what happens when you're behind Brad Tui in these big power machines. Danny making a couple of errors in the chase, so it's gonna give the advantage through to Brad. And don't get me wrong, that is a big power donk under the bonnet of that 70s Falcon as well. You know, big, big turbo barra. And when he's on it, it sings. Be right, we're having a chat a little bit earlier. And Danny's really switched his car up a lot before debuting it uh, this year. So he's getting familiar with that WiseFab front end setup and all the additional power that the car's got. And Brad too are getting the nod there from the judges. Listen to that little SR20 screen. The last one left in the field at the moment. Uh, hopefully we'll see another couple back next year. You can see Alex is a little bit far off those clips, giving Anthony Billick a little bit of an opportunity here in the chase position. Yeah, the room was definitely there for Billick, but only reeling Alex Sharker in up and over the hill there. So both of these cars pretty evenly matched in terms of road speed. It's just going to be the level of commitment from the driver that really determines where they're going to end up. And we can see already Alex Sharker all over the rear quarter of Anthony Billick. Alex really getting in amongst it there. Hasn't been in the series for a while, but getting back in there and wow, what's happened there? He's pulled away at the last bit, but a couple of mistakes from uh, both drivers and... Well, we're going to send them again. We can't split them. Hey, I love it when you guys make that decision. It means more drifting for us here, watching from the sidelines. Alex Sharker leading again and using every bit of angle in that WiseFab front end, tipping it in. But Billick seems to be a lot hungrier on the chase this time around, Dan. Maybe a little bit too hungry there. You could see Billick dropping a wheel, and he's got himself in a mess coming up that top story. Ooh. Alex learnt from his first run, got it right on those clips, so definite advantage to Sharker that one. Nearly even saw a rear end clip there coming across the line, so... Billick knows that he's got the speed and he's got the aggression. He's just got to put it together and try pull away from Alex Sharker there in that slick looking RX-8. His SR20 got a bit of a tune up before this round. Uh, he's really, really thrown all that power down there, but I'm not sure he's done enough to get over the top of Alex looking at it when we go back to our scores. 
There we go. There's our top eight decided. So Bo Yates will be facing off against Alex Sharker that we just saw in the RX8 there. Brad Tui and James Abbott, Warwick Hill and Angus Kidd, and of course Michael Prosnick battling out with the local Mo El Huli. Rightio. So Brad uh, basically uh, walked it out. He um, very skilled driver. We uh, got a little bit lost in his smoke. I don't like damaging people's cars or my own, so I probably just lost a little bit of an edge giving him a little bit of the gap. And uh, once I let that go, I couldn't couldn't claim it back. But congratulations to Brad, great driver and well deserved. Yeah, feeling really comfortable, um, having some good laps. Um, had a good close run with uh, Anthony Billick. Uh, we've had several runs over the years and um, yeah, now I've got Bo, so had some battle practice with him earlier. Um, keen, to, keen to send it. Feeling confident, I see. Oh, just anxious, <laughs> want to get out there. <laughs> We're here to make a statement and we're not here to stop, you know. We really want to bring that trophy home and bring it back to the Muslim community and show them that, you know, anyone can do this sport and it's talent to anyone. So it doesn't matter who you are, where you're from, what you do, go out there, give it a crack, give it all you got, never back down. And that's, it is what it is at the end of the day. If it's going to go your way, it's going to go your way. There's nothing to stop anyone. Yeah, if Finney hit me on the entry, it's, I don't know what they're doing. So much contact happened today. I think everyone's yeah. just trying to go, go all out. It's really hard coming into that first corner and a first run. As soon as he was on the gas, it's just smoke cloud and I couldn't see. End up off on track, off track. He um, didn't have a great run behind me. I thought I lost it for sure, but then I heard that he didn't have a very good run either. It was a rerun and then um, he turned it up and gave me a good old nudge, but it's racing. It's had a bit of a contact with jabs, um, got up real close, got lost in the smoke a bit and maybe it was a bit close or yeah and smashed the rim and ripped out the rack end and snapped the rack and made a bit of a mess really. Tight battles and plenty of carnage in the top 16 and the drivers are hyped to attack the top eight on the other side of the break for round four of the High Tech Drift All-Stars. Don't go anywhere. Hey guys, Scott Shembury here. We are here for round four of the High Tech Drift All-Stars at Winton Raceway. The sun is shining. The boys are out there being put on a show in practice. I'm here today to tell you, talk to you about a bit with the High Tech Oil 350Z. We're gonna go over the car, go over what the boys do out on the track. So let's jump in the car and I'll show you what happens. So this is pretty much a standard drift car. All the bits and goodies in here. Got the steering wheel. So pretty much here at Winton Raceway, uh, the track that we're using this weekend, the boys are going to be starting off the start line, boom, in first gear, switch to second, switch to third. They're going to initiate. Quick dab of the handbrake. The judges don't want to see too much handbrake this weekend. They want you, want you to flow through that first corner, really be on the power, and push hard out to those clips. So then all the clips today are going to be in on the inside of the track. So the boys are going to push through all third gear, most of them. In the clip, in the clip, they're going to come out onto the main straight. Some boys might pick fourth gear, some might say third, depending on their power output. Another transition around a tyre bundle and then finish the track. Pretty much all these drift cars have, you got your dash, you're going to have your warning lights, your engine temps. You don't want to get too hot out here. It's going to be a nice hot day today, around 26 degrees. So the boys will be watching those engine temps. They don't want the oil temps to get too hot. We don't want to hurt these cars. We want the cars to get through the whole day, finish on the podium and let all the driving do the talk. So this is where all the action happens, guys. LS3, twin turbo power plant powered by twin GDX 3176 turbos. You got a nice bar valves here. In a cooler, got your oil cooler here, your power steering cooler. I want to keep those temps nice and low. You got the dry sump pump there, which runs into the dry sump tank inside the car. Um, obviously fuel rails, got big injectors feeding that E85 fuel, keep that car running nice. Twin gates, pretty much this is a work of art, this engine bay as you can see. Running about 520 kilo at the wheels, up around 700 horsepower, so this thing puts it down to the ground. Obviously a crucial part of drifting, guys, is the tyre package. As you can see on the tyre here, we're running a good ride tyre, a nice soft compound. I've ran these tyres for a number of years, up there with the best. We're running a 265, 35, 18, so the 18's the size of the rim. The 265 is the width of the tyre and the 35 is the height. So obviously important part, the boys need to keep these tyres at the right temp. If they go over, they're going to lose grip. If they're not the right temp, they're not going to have as much grip. So one of the most important parts of these bad boys, they only last about two laps. So a brand new set of tyres, two laps and they're gone. Get in the pits, change them over and get back out for your battles. 
radio has been moved to the back of the car. We wanted to transfer some weight from the front to the rear. Obviously some nice ducting made here on a bit of a V-band. Catches that wind nice and good. Keeps the car cool. And obviously if you have a front end hit, this isn't going to get damaged too well. And it's in like pretty much of a crumble zone in the rear. So if you do have a rear hit, you're actually not really going to touch this. So this is safe. Keeps the car running. If we do have a hit, we're going to get back out on track straight away. Dry sump pump down here I was talking about before. Oil runs in there, runs from the engine, keeps that pump running so you're never going to have oil starvation in the engine. Got the fuel tank right there. Fire suppression system, always a good thing to have in when motor racing. If there is a fire, you don't have long, you don't have very uh, much time to react. So you hit one button, that will suppress the fire extinguisher throughout the vehicle. Good piece of gear. Let's get out on track, guys, and uh, get the action started. So this is how our top eight is shaping up for the high-tech drift all-stars. We've got Michael Prosnick up against Moel Hooley, Battle of the Victorians there. Warwick Hill facing off against Angus Kidd, who has been on fire this weekend. And Bo Yates with Alex Sharker, and of course, Brad Tui up against James Abbott in the high-tech 350Z that Scott just walked us around in the pits. All of these cars in the top eight putting down serious power with some of the most skilled drivers we have in the series finding their way through. Riding on board now with Warwick Hill, who is leading Angus Kidd, and this is sure to be one hell of a battle. Warwick off the handbrake and straight into the power, but Angus is there with him the whole way. Look at this emulation here, coming onto the straight. Perfect chase technique there from Angus Kidd, again emulating through every switchback the whole way up the straight. That's bloody impressive, Dan. The good ride replay here, you're going to see exactly what we asked Angus to do in the driver's briefing, which was to allow them to approach that A pillar. So they're allowed to suck up from pretty much this point on, get right up on that on the door, and you see Angus getting using all of that opportunity now as he approaches that AP on Warwick's car, sits there in the pocket, flicks it back around the last clip. That's an advantage to Angus. I mean, when you take the weight of these two vehicles into account, I don't think there'd be all that much of a power difference. Yes, Angus's car making north of 500 kilowatt, but Warwick's is up around the 400 mark in a much lighter car. Both JZ singing. You can see Warwick here eager to overcome the disadvantage he got before, but running wide there, pretty messy as Angus tips it into the front straight there. Bit too much angle, but definitely an impressive and exciting ride there from Angus. It certainly was. If we look at the good ride replay again here, you can see Warwick's right on his door early on and pushing hard, but maybe a little bit too hard as he switches back, loses that proximity, falls off the back of the car. Angus taking the advantage there and an opportunity to throw that car on full lock using all of the wise fab underneath it. A big win for him. Up the straight there is where you really see the traction of this Winton Raceway surface, churning tyres and squealing away. These will be cars putting the surface to its limit. Now the twin supercharged LS of Brad Tui out in front there with the twin turbocharged LS of the Hitech 350 being piloted by James Abbott. Seems to be getting left behind, just bush firing up the straight while Brad Tui puts it all down and rockets away across the finish line. Yeah, not sure if uh, James is just taking a little bit longer to, to dial himself into the power of this car and using a little bit too much wheel, wheel speed, which is actually slowing his car speed down. But certainly Brad getting the better run here, hitting all the clips, jabs is a little bit off, and so Brad's going to take the advantage. Very clear advantage there now. So James is going to know, after watching Brad too pull away from him, that he's going to have to pick some speed up and be very aggressive in this lead run here to have a chance going through to that top floor. Tui right there with James Abbott. Let's see how they switch back on the straight. Nice and tight. Tui going that little bit wide, but potentially get some room. And oh! There's contact. You see that tyre barrier there being moved. Not quite sure what's going on there, but he's giving us the thumbs up that he is okay. So Brad potentially going a little bit wide early on in the switchback there. Maybe getting lost in the smoke, Dan. I'm not sure. Yeah, I think it's a little bit of a combination of the smoke, but also the speed of the 350 this weekend, the high-tech oil 350, just not having the speed that these guys are used to with Rob Arbolino behind the wheel. Jab seems to have it set up a little bit more slippy and doesn't quite have that drive or the wheel speed's too fast, as I was saying before. And so therefore, you can see Brad's just too close to that car. Now he gets lost in the smoke, pops out and goes, oh, no, that's not the line I want. And unfortunately, results in contact. Yeah, you're right. Earlier on about this point here, as they switch back, if Brad would have been able to get back on the power there, that car would have driven in towards the apex and just tucked in nicely 
on the 350 there, but he's just delayed a little bit, not wanting to get too close to what is an obviously slower car, and that sent him wide and out into the tie barriers. Next battle up now, Bo Yates facing off against Alex Sharka in that clean RX-8. Both these cars running big power JZs under the bonnet. And listen to Bo's scream. That's got to be one of the angriest sounding JZs in Australia, and it gets used. Look at the car length gap he has been able to open up over Alex Sharka. Definitely the benchmark car, Dave. If we look at the Good Ride replay once again, Good Ride, big supporters of the series, big supporters of the sport, you know, doing everything to try and get these guys out there and carrying along. Um, but it's the Achilles tread Toyota 86 with that big 2J under the bonnet, just using all of that torque and all of that grip. And unfortunately for Alex, driving away from him. It's a real hard car to reel back in because you need to be basically on Bo's door in the chase on the very first corner and maintain that distance because otherwise he'll gap you. You can see Bo there, pro chase technique, looking over his shoulder, knowing that if a car drag races him down the straight, it's again very hard to reel in. And oh no, a spin there and late contact from Alex Sharka. That's a really hard one there. Hopefully... Bo's managed to get past him unscathed, but he's crawling slowly. I think we might have an issue here for both cars. That was a pretty big hit there. That uh, car just came around. The nose of Alex's car came around right into that rear quarter of Bo's car. He's pulling away. He might be okay. Um, but, yeah, it's not the first time this has happened, too. You know, there was a time a couple of years back at World Time Attack where these two guys came up against each other. Uh, I think it was Alex in the lead again. Oh, and there it is. Well, that's a much bigger hit when you see it in... in on board in Bo's car and you can see straight away Bo knows there's something wrong look at the steering wheel that's not right either and considering it was hit in the back there's definitely got to be something some sort of damage in the rear suspension of that car so for anyone who's spun a car you can see how easy that is to do Alex as he's come around has maintained the steering lock that he had you know in the heat of the moment it's very difficult to remember you know straighten the wheel out or go somewhere else so Bo would have thought he's passed look this car's spun but then suddenly the front end has just darted wide there as those front wheels have gripped and you can see the look of disappointment on Bo's face he must be devastated not too devastated though because with Alex making that error Bo will go through the top four we're still waiting on the other side of the battle tree to be decided and this battle here is crucial for Michael Prosnick who would be hoping to face off against and ultimately beat Bo Yates in the top four but first he needs to overcome the powerhouse that is Moel Hooley in that blue garage works S13 as we have a look at the replay now you can see Moe going right up there, getting a nice clip early on. You're going to lose him a little bit in the smoke, but you can see he really utilises this opportunity to switch a little bit earlier, which was an allowed opportunity there, switching back and trying to stay on Proz's door. But the only issue with doing that is that Proz has so much speed. Yeah, you can't give him an inch because he will take that mile. And now that we see the positions reversed, we just know Proz is going to be chasing as hard as he can. That top four spot is on the line now against Moe Hawley. Listen to the noise, that aspirated V8 of Michael Prosnick going up against the Turbo LS of Moa Hooli that I believe has run somewhere in nine second mark down the quarter. Yeah, it's a quick car. You see just here, this is where Mo makes the mistake that's going to be costly for him in this battle. He should have, he needed it to be smooth, he needed to be right. He was going to potentially take the advantage up until that point. But unfortunately, too close to call. Let's send him again. Oh, not unfortunate for me, Dan. I love seeing guys like this drive together. You can see how comfortable they are, how much they're thriving on this higher speed, more technical layout. As they come together now, Proz seems much smoother in the lead with Mo getting left even further behind again there in the chase. We saw he did so well in his lead run that that did overcome the advantage that Proz had first time round. Let's talk through the replay, Dan. Definitely, you'd see Prozzy spotters have got onto the phone to him there and had a chat in his ear and just said, listen, mate, you need to be right on this. You can see hitting the clips perfectly. Moe making a mistake there in the chase position, dropping a wheel. That's a definite deduction for him. And it's also pushed him a little bit back off the back of Prozzy, so there's further deductions for Moe there. Mo with a slight disadvantage heading into his lead run, but we saw him in the same position the first time round. So anything can happen here as Proz goes to chuck it in on Mo's door. Leave a bit of a conservative distance there as Mo runs wide, but there we see it. Proz just starting to reel him in. And as they come onto the straight, they're very nice emulation, but Proz heading just that little bit wide there 
Not too sure what was going on, but early on in the run at least, a very tight chase from Proz. Absolutely. Moe knowing he's got to throw down really hard in this battle to take that win or even throw it back to another one more time. Unfortunately, pushing too wide in that corner, making more errors out in the lead as he switches it back through here. And then Pros being able to improve on that line, push right out to the clips, use all of that power and sit right on Moe's door. It's all Pros for me. The result was really up in the air with the advantage going back and forth, but Michael Prosnick earning himself a spot in the top four up against Angus Kidd for the first time that he's gotten this far in the ladder. Now some frantic repairs going on on the other side of the ladder with Bo Yates hoping to face off against James Abbott. Alex had to rotate. Look, I thought I was around him, to be honest, and then all of a sudden whack, so... I don't know. Too Anyways. much speed. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not sure what happened, but listen, uh, it's racing incident, you know, things happen. We all yeah, crash it every it. now and again, and Alex is a good guy. He's one of my good mates. Uh, he's up here trying to help me fix it and all apologetic, sir. So. Magic Mo, so I heard you had some steering issues on track. Tell me a little bit what happened. Yeah, well, come in a bit real hot I'm behind Prosnik, and um, I've done a big brake lock up, and unfortunately it was enough to bend something, but obviously I didn't have enough time to repair it. So I went out, gave it my best bet, and my dip was winding louder and louder, so... It's not an excuse, driver's error, you know, uh, this is racing, we all make mistakes. Um, hopefully I can come back next time and better myself and better for the team. Into the top four, um, I think we're going to try to get a bit more grip in the car. It seems a bit slower than some of these uh, much lighter cars. So um, yeah, hopefully we can pick up the pace a bit and not get in anyone's way and have a nice clean battle. Look, to be honest, we know that we've had a few issues, but there's no excuse. Like, for Jabber to jump in that car like he has this weekend, like, and got half a lap practice yesterday you know and the way he was driving today you know massive credit to him and the team i just yeah absolutely got lost in the smoke <laughs> and i just i kept on the gas and hoped that i'd come out in the right spot and when i came through the smoke there was a tire wall there spanners spinning wildly in the pits as not only the top four of our high-tech drift all-stars pro series try to get their cars together for those battles but we'll also see the famous insurance pro-am on the other side of the break we'll be back with plenty of drifting action at winton motor raceway Welcome back to round four of the High Tech Drift All-Stars. We've seen plenty of action as the pros battle their way through our battle tree. Now we will see the top four in just a sec of the pros, but on the other side of that, also the Famous Insurance Pro-Am Series. So plenty of drifting action left to go. And here's how the pro top four is shaping up. Some top looking battles there from some top drivers too. Great to see Angus Kidd coming in. And this is where, for us as judges, it's really time to get down to those finite points. This is where we're gonna earn our money and have to pick on those little mistakes. Dan, I do not envy you as head judge there. It's a tough job, but you do a great job of it. Now, straight into these top four battles, we're riding on board with Michael Prosnick now in that SCR Motorsport. Super duper lightweight S13 with a big, angry, naturally aspirated V8 under the bonnet, thanks to Juar's performance engines. Being chased down by that Game On Motorsport Super that we've seen Angus Kidd pedaling so well the whole way through the battle. Seems to be slightly outclassed there by the international superstar that is Proz. But Angus Kidd driving so well this weekend in that 500 kilowatt plus 2J JZA80 Supra. Yeah, Angus just getting a little bit gap there at the start um, and panicking a bit too much. And I guess this is what happens when you're first time in your top four, first time up against some real big guys for where it really matters, where it counts, where the big points are. You can see Angus making a mistake, just pushing a little bit too wide in turn one. And for the rest of that lap, he just kept falling back behind. Advantage pros. It's interesting to note how this circuit really splits it up. You know, you'll see a lot of these battles where a driver will have an advantage earlier and advantage late in the run. It is because, you know, this entry here is crucial. So Angus chucking it in, but Proz is there with him. As they switch back together, beautiful emulation there from Proz. But contact, as it looks like Angus might have missed a gear or potentially sprayed one through the gearbox. Let's see if he gets back going under his own power. Oh, he's pulling in there, and I think I heard some metallic sounds as well. You could, Dave. You could really oh. hear him trying to crunch gears there or click something. It sounds like it could have been a, maybe an input shaft or some sort of one of the main shafts in that gearbox. So I'm not even sure if he's got any gears left in that. You can watch he's come in here pretty well, but all of a sudden he switches back. He might have grabbed another gear. or when he, yeah, It's just as he's tried to power it up, you can actually see a, a bit of a spark or something below that car. So it's spat something. It's not enjoyed it. Caused the contact, so... That one's going to go to Prosnick, definitely. Oh, here comes the impact. That's a 
pretty big hit there and another bit of bad luck for Michael Prosnick. You know, you could see the confidence he had in chasing Angus, who was quick early on, but as soon as that gear's gone, bang, proximity disappears and a big bit of contact. Into the other side of our top four now, Bo Yates as our current series leader being chased down by James Abbott in the high-tech 350Z. Seems to just be outclassed in terms of speed yet again with Bo Yates pulling away from what is normally quite a quick car in that high-tech 350. The boys were talking about in the break that they were going to try and put some grip into that car and try and get it going a bit faster, but judging by this battle, I mean, he is up against one of the quickest cars in the field. He hasn't managed to do it. He hasn't got the grip he needs, and you can see already as we go into turn two, Yates is just gently walking that thing away, picking up all the clips, the outside one there, hits the nose clip there. It's an easy advantage for Bo on that one. Incar made that really interesting as well because you could see that while Jabs was using quite a bit of handbrake on the transitions there, Bo was just dabbing a little bit and some of these drivers not at all. So, you know, obviously in a high grip car, you do need that handbrake to get it out there when you're in the lead in some scenarios. In the chase will be a bit more handbrake heavy, but maybe that lack of power to the rear wheels contributed a little bit at least to Bo pulling away, who now seems to just be all over the back of that high tech 350Z. Yeah, Bo managed to manage the slower speed car that he wasn't expecting quite well there. And even while he dropped a wheel or two on that chase run, he was able to maintain really good proximity. And the slower cars caused him to just check up a little bit. You can see he drops one wheel through here. Uh, only the one, though. It's a small deduction. His proximity back through this second sector, though, he is all over the back of that 350, giving it a lesson. And it really is a road speed difference because both of these cars well and truly over the 500 kilowatt mark. You know, the 350Z doing it with two turbos hanging off the side of a LS V8, whereas Bose chose to go the more traditional JZ route, and man, does that thing make a great noise. Carly's down in the pits now to give us the inside word on the aftermath of the Kid Pros battle. Uh, come into turn two, gave it a big re-clutch. Gearbox exploded, car shut down. Uh, I could hear Pot Pros coming in behind me. There was nothing I could do really, I was a passenger, and unfortunately, by the sounds of things, he's had a big hit with me, and I feel really bad, because he's such a good dude, and want to see him do well, and now an error on my part, or a failure on my car has damaged his, and it's not really what you want to see in the sport. It's a bit unfortunate that we rely on the cars 100%, but that's what it is, so got to go give him a big cuddle and say sorry. You've come back on a tow truck, so what's happened there? Um, I thought I was full committed behind him. I thought he was like running a real good line. I'm like, yeah, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it, then stop, and I went just bang, straight into him. Um, it was it like it needed a tire at end? I uh, popped the tire end, end out, so hopefully we can get it sorted in time. The hit from Finney before, it hasn't been driving as it should. Yeah. Car is absolutely thrashed, and um, when your car's not tracking 100%, driving flat out, you know, beside that wall there, it's a little bit hairy, especially when you're chasing behind uh, in the smoke. Here's your famous insurance pro-am, where we'll see Matt Walters going up against Jordan Putkins, Isaac Get facing off against Nathan Atkinson. All of these guys hungry to end up on the trophy. Let's get into it. Here's our top four pro-am. It's an all-new top four, too. None of these guys have made it this far, as far as I know, except for Isaac Get. So it's going to be interesting to see how these guys go, Dave. Taking a little bit back a step here, we've got tyre restrictions for these guys. A lot less power in these cars, so it's going to be interesting to see how they go thrown down on this big track. A lot of really interesting stories with these guys. Well, ooh, a bit of a spin there from Putkins, who otherwise was driving quite well the whole way through the weekend. But what I was getting at is a lot of these drivers just progressing round after round. And Matt Walters deserves a special mention, you know, tidying up from a car that we saw kind of shaking its way around the figure eight a little bit and then slowly getting more and more confident. Now onto the big fast circuit of Winton, tipping it in at the top of third gear and putting on what looks to be a tight chase. You're really not backing off, even with that 10-0 advantage. And a lot of these guys, too, they do it on their own. They don't have the spotters that are in their ears and their helmets like the pro cars do. So they just they don't know what the result was. They've got to have a crack. Now, Isaac Get is a name that we're getting pretty familiar with in that DVS tuning R33 Skyline. Makes some good power. And, you know, Isaac is not afraid to pedal that thing and go hard. That's exactly what he'll need to do up against Nathan Atkinson on his home turf. A guy familiar with Winton Raceway in this front section here. So it seems to be getting gapped a little bit by Isaac in the lead. But let's see what Nathan's lead looks like as we switch him around. Isaac picking up just before this round. Another sponsor of Jack's Spinning Wheel Tyres. And those tyres are obviously giving him plenty of grip, taking an advantage in the first run. 
chasing hard now though and having a faster car it's always interesting to watch how these guys go and particularly the pro-am guys go in a chase position when they've got the speed advantage nathan running a little bit wide there isaac managing that very well he's done an excellent job here for me it's isaac going through yeah agreed there dan some beautiful emulation from isaac get and that has got him a position in the final up against matt walters while jordan putkins and nathan atkinson will face off for that third place and here it is, the third place battle for your famous insurance Pro-Am. Looks like uh, Nathan will be chasing this time around as Jordan Putkins goes out in the lead there. Nice snappy entry there from Putkins, but Atkinson is right with him. Let's see the emulation as they come onto the straight. Nicely done again from Atkinson in the chase. Seems to be pretty equally matched in speed, these two cars, but Putkins pulling away up over the hill and through the finish line. A pretty nice run there from both of the drivers uh, for Pro-Am. Dave, these guys really starting to step it up and, and show that this is a good feeder series for the Pro Series. You can see through the first two corners, equal errors from both the guys, both a little bit off the clips. Um, but the error that really stands out is, unfortunately, after they both did such a great job to push out of this outer zone, Nathan comes switching back across behind Jordan, just drops a wheel, and that's the difference for us. It's Jordan the advantage. There you go. I missed that one, Dan. It's good to have a judge up here in the box telling us the decisions as they are. So looks like a clear advantage there for Atkinson, who now goes out in the lead. Very good position to be in in a third-place battle. Yeah, Jordan with an advantage there in the chase now, chasing down hard. All he's got to do pretty much is sit there and run a nice line, not run too wide. And he's doing exactly that. He's running a little bit wide, but he's managed to keep all of his wheels on the tarmac. And while it wasn't the best chase, that wheel drop is definitely going to cost him. Yeah, it's unfortunate to see how just a small mistake can have so many knock-on effects when both of these battles are scored out of 10. For you to get, you know, whatever it is, how many points for a wheel off? A half a point for a wheel off. Yeah, so to get even a half a point deduction is considerable. And when you're trying to divide cars here, and especially at this point, you know, where the battle was so tight early on, and the majority of points have been scored on those early clipping points. The gap, yes, it does hurt you, but there's so much more to gain in the early part of the battle, and that's why Jordan's going through. 100%. Jordan will take the win and the trophy there. Now we're going to have a look at the final. This one's a good one. We've got 2R33. Dave's close to my heart. Hi, hey, Captain. <laughs> a couple of boats. Loving it. And good to see the guys out there pushing hard. Matty Walters having a cracking run out there just dropping off a little bit in the end but that's all due to that shallow line on that outer zone and that's exactly what we'd expect to see from someone like isaac who is one of the more experienced ones in the pro-am field so both these drivers entering together yes and then some nice emulation as they switch back together but it's as they come onto the straight that it's worth watching what isaac's doing here so he is emulating what matt's doing but he's also improving on his line so we see here shredding a little bit wider going a little bit deeper in that outside clipping zone there and yes he did lose some proximity but he was showing that he not only had the superior speed, but the superior line. Great explanation, Dave. And really, mate, if you give up commentating, you'd probably come up here and have a judge with us. You pretty much picked it all up there. My friends hate me enough as it is, mate. No, it's good fun, mate. It's always rewarding, and it's great to help these guys get and progress. Uh, but you can see now as Isaac's got the lead, Matty's just not as smooth, not as consistent. A couple of wheel drops. You yeah. know where it's going from here. Yeah, I mean, half a point off for one wheel off, but when you start dropping them track edge to track edge, it starts turning into a pretty big deduction. 100% mate, and two one wheels, uh, as we like to call them, so there's one wheel, not not two wheels at a time, because two wheels is a zero, but two one wheels, so one wheel, then back on the track, then another one wheel, definitely is a full point deduction. Matty picking up a, a full point deduction here. Those spinning wheel tires, Isaac get in the DVS Channing R33. He's going to the top of the top of the tree, top of the podium, and he's gonna get his first win, Dave. Got to be stoked with that after coming all the way down to Winton in that DVS tuning R33. Well done, Isaac. Congratulations, Isaac, for taking first place on Pro-Am. How are you feeling right now? I'm feeling pretty pumped, pretty happy. Just want to say a shout out to my wife, Rachel, uh, my son, Lincoln. Uh, DVS Tuning for getting the car ready and always keeping it on song. And uh, my new tyre sponsor, Spinning Wheel Tyres. I feel like I say it every round, but the positivity and love between drivers is one of the reasons that I love drifting so much. You know, unfortunately, Angus Kidd having that gearbox failure that not only ended his weekend and chance at a podium, but also gave Proz a big uphill battle to get this car prepped 
for the battle where the championship is on the line up against Bo Yates. These two guys, the top two drivers in the series and throwing it down into the front S's of Winton Raceway. What a battle already. So tight there from Bo in the chase, emulating well on Proz, but it looks like Proz has that speed up the straight there. Yeah, Dave, um, just a couple of little mistakes from Bo, and we've not used to seeing this. I don't know whether it's been a high workload, but he's just been a little bit off the clips. He's right there on proximity, but he's just out from those clips. From here, he gets it all sorted out, tucks in there in that smoke cloud, switches back early, which you're allowed to do, and then chases Prozzy up the hill. It's a small advantage to the Proz. You know, it's something that uh, is pretty easy to do to make some of those mistakes, especially when the level of speed steps up so severely between earlier battles and now these later battles. You know, both of these drivers have been at the top of their game, qualifying first and second, slaying it through all of the battles, and now that they're head-to-head, -head, we've got some pretty evenly matched drivers. Absolutely. You can see Proz just pulling the wheel up on top of those apex, uh, the ripple strips through those corners there. He really hit that. That was a top run from Prozzi. The positions will be reversed now. We're riding on board with Bo Yates and that Toyota Genuine Parts 86. Big JZ Power howling through that straight cut sequential box. Makes all the race car noises, but so too does the SCR Motorsport LS Powered S13 that we're riding on board with now. The speed between the two is incredible, but it looks like Bo has found a little bit extra with the same advantage going to the chase car both times around. Wow, I did not expect to see Bo pull away like that. That was an amazing run from Bo. Um, after seeing what Prozzi did and threw down, obviously he's been told you've got to get on it, you've got to hit all your clips, and watch him just run a wheel up on that ripple. Prozzi making the error there, dropping a wheel in the chase position, and not only that, Bo's pulling away from him. I didn't expect that. And it's for that reason that Bo has secured the win at round four of the High Tech Drift All-Stars by the skin of his teeth, you know, kicking it up a notch when he went into the lead with a slight disadvantage, just pulling out superior speed over Michael Prosnick there. But it is still tight at the top of the ladder with Bo Yates and Michael Prosnick and Brad Tui all within striking distance for the final round. It's sure to be a hot one. You had some dramas too with your car. It wasn't easy getting to that top spot, but you're up there again. Yeah, unfortunately, I made contact with uh, Sharker. I, I could have sworn I was around him, but turned around and bit me in the bum. But listen, uh, full credit to, I mean, Brad Tui gave me an arm out of the back of his car. I mean, Sharker was there removing the lower control arm and getting it back in. And God, I had like a really good battle against James. So hopefully he can get a car back together and get back here in the competition. But you know, the rivalry between me and Pros right now, it's like, uh, I guess why we're still drifting and doing it. And, you know, big thanks to High Tech for putting on another good show. and. You know, just fantastic to be back on the top step and we'll see where we end up in the championship. Yeah, no, it's good. The um, the car runs mint. There's no issues with that. It's just crab walking and steering wheels upside down and shaking. So it was a shame we couldn't put a better show on towards the end. Um, normally, you know, I love driving with Bo. It's always fun. We always put on a show. Um, obviously, my crew, you know, everyone watching back home, the guys, they, they keep these things running. Um, the guys who organise this uh, event, it's, you know, we're just here to, to, you know, be idiots. But everyone else involved, that's what it's about. We got through against a field of amazing drivers, um, you know, Tui and and who else was it? Duars, unfortunate what happened to them. But, you know, I was given the opportunity to drive the 350 and it just feels really good to um, get that cup for George and everyone that runs this awesome event. Yeah, the cars, it just keeps getting better and better. I'm getting more seat time, which is good, and it's working out exactly like we want. Not with blown gearboxes, but everything else has been sweet. The car's been fast, put on a show, so hopefully everyone enjoyed it. Trophies handed out, and even Angus Kidd there running up in the pro. Stoked to be here and put on a fantastic drive. We've seen so many drivers display exceptional talent here on the fast circuit of Winton Raceway for round four of the High Tech Drift All-Stars. What's a podium without a bit of a champagne spray? And you can see the friendly rivalry there between Jabs, Bo, and of course, Michael Prosnick. We'll see all of these drivers battling it out at round five of the High Tech Drift All-Stars, heading to my home track and one of my favorites, Wakefield Park. We'll be there Friday 30th of November and Saturday 1st of December for the Pro, the Pro-Am, and of course, the Drift For Real if you want to get out there and have a bit of practice. So thank you again to Dan Mackey, head judge of the High Tech Drift All-Stars for joining me and giving me a bit of insight in the booth. Dave, it's been an absolute cracking round, mate. One of the best we've had. Some brilliant drivers. We're watching these guys celebrate now, having an absolute ball out there. 
They did a killer job. I'm so pumped. I'm so looking forward for, to our finale in just a short amount of time at Wakefield Park. If you've never been to drifting before, get down there. You can get right up close to the action, see these guys perform, and someone's going home a champion. It's going to be awesome. We've always had Australia's best drifters battling it out at the top of the high-tech drift all-stars, but this was the round where we saw the field bunch together and have so many tight battles and upsets. So I'm excited to see how they go stretching their legs on the fast circuit of Wakefield Park for round five. Be there. There's more to come on today's show after the break as the big rigs of motor racing hit Wakefield Park for the fourth and final round of the Australian Super Truck Championship. <laughs> 